mouth is dry. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, sweet, we're live. Um, everyone, welcome to our Q and A with our Basecamp team, Prime Flow. Um, for those of you who don't know by now, I'm Scott. I run the Basecamp program. Um, if you've been tuning into me, you are fed up of talking to me right now. But luckily, the guests are more interesting, which is cracking. So we got. Uh, Prime flow for the next sort of a 20 minutes diving into what they're up to and kind of how it is. So I think it's probably useful if uh, Dan and Jan, you want to introduce yourselves and give a, a little bit of a context about who you guys are. Sure, uh, I can start. So hey everybody, I'm Daniel, uh, CTO of PrimeFlow. Um, most of my background is uh, from Google. So I've been at Google for six plus years, uh, tech lead in ads. Uh, building tech teams, getting slightly frustrated with recruiting, and you know that, that leads into what we do. All right, my name is Jan. I have a business background. Uh, I've always been fascinated on the intersection of yeah, tech and business. I'm really excited about um, the problem of online collaboration, and that's one of the areas we're tackling with Remco. Nice. Uh, cheers, guys. And, and so you guys came together at Google to create PrimeFlow. This is probably a cracking point to tell people what PrimeFlow is, why it's awesome. And then also maybe a little bit like how you guys kind of got going together. Right, so um, I would basically start the story with, yeah, as I was saying, hiring sex, uh, recruiting sex, we can probably all agree. Uh, and even for Google, this is a problem. And I would know because you know I, I've been doing that, uh, building teams there. Um, and you know, what you tend to realize is that the best hires come through private recommendations, but basically nobody has figured out a way to scale it. Um, so you are basically left with kind of low quality leads on one hand or overpriced agencies on the other hand. Um, but then, you know, if you look at the space closely, there is a lot of activity kind of happening privately behind, below the surface, uh, you know, hiring managers and agencies trading leads and people trading contacts and it's very intransparent and inefficient. And so we basically decided, you know, we kind of got in touch through an internal crypto group at Google, Google with Jan and we decided, okay, let's uh, give this underbelly of the talent market a bit of a structure, uh, both socially and, you know, economically and to unlock the, the efficiency and the potential that's there. And in the long run, we basically want to enable people to work where they have the most impact for a fair reward. Do you want to give us in two lines what PrimeFlow does? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, take the one. Well, like the easiest way of saying it really is that it's partner networks for recruiting and sales. So it's kind of, you know, that encapsulates it, but it's really a software and then certain service components on top. All right, gotcha. Now, uh, way back when, before you guys joined the program, we were kind of talking about prime flow and we got quite a quite a deep way into i guess under the skin of what is on the face of it real simple it's like person a meets person b um and that's the power of referrals but you guys talk about it in terms of uh a transaction rails for relationships so every relationship has a monetary value um take us away talk us through it tell us why that's not inhumane and i guess how you guys got to that point yeah, I mean, I guess it's, you know, it's just a very kind of nerdy way of looking at things. But, you know, like I can try to outline a bit more where we're coming from here. So basically, the core hypothesis is that there's so much um, value locked up in people's personal networks. And you're right, there's certainly like a social expectation that, you know, interests are made for free. And, you know, that's that. And so because of that awkwardness that you hinted at, like that basically um, blocks that value from being unlocked because the best people are super busy. So if you want them to actually focus and, you know, like go into the network and reach out for you, like you better make it worthwhile for you. And currently that's, there's just no way to do that. So if then, you know, prime flow comes in as a kind of third party that packages and makes that transaction very sm uh, smooth, then it's uh, less awkward for that person and then we, on top of that, we even allow them to donate, uh, you know, their reward to charity if they don't want to get paid. You know, that's also an option. But really kind of to, I don't know, to summarize, really, we're not reinventing the wheel, right? Because if you think about it, 
the entire recruiting industry, which is, you know, billions of dollars. I mean, that's basically what they do, right? They get paid for making intros. Yeah, it's just something weird about the phrase transaction browse for relationships. Um, I don't know the language, so don't mind that. <laughs> yeah, we, we, don't, we don't talk that way to clients, just here among the friends, you know? I, I hear you, but, but I guess like on that point, actually, that's a real good like movement. Like So on the client side stuff, you guys went, you're in beta, right? But it's quite like a public beta, like people can sign up and, and use the products and service, right? How many people are you working with at the moment? Because like the people get this, right? So it, is, it isn't a public beta. Like people can sign up on the website, right? And we, we'll get in touch with them. So we're kind of purposefully um, testing it with a few users at a time. So we have now about 10 uh, companies that are using it and each of them has an um, initial set of partners onboarded. And, you know, we really want to make sure we nail the interactions like from, you know, like company to partner and how they hand over the lead. And it's actually more complex than you think. Um, so we really want to get that um, right before like opening it up um, more publicly. Right. That makes sense. You want to help bring like simplicity to these more commercial relationships um, and kind of pull, pull that together. And I know that you, you're in the relationship game and, and kind of making that work. You guys have got a bit of a like a theory around how relationships can become more important as the future kind of evolves, dare I say it, and that these like big structures and large corporates are going to kind of break down into significantly smaller relationship-based businesses. Yeah, so that's basically kind of uh, our macro outlook on this is that firms are breaking down more and more into smaller and smaller components. So kind of where we see this going is, and I think many on this screencast would agree, is fluid online networks that will end up collaborating and that's where the bulk of the value will be created. So if we think in this you know, like context, actually the relationship will uh, become more important because that's really the kind of last mile that cannot be commoditized by technology or automated away is actually having a relationship you know, with the relevant person for any given uh, context. So that's why really, you know, like we're targeting that core value and want to allow individuals to yeah, unlock the value of that. Um, by, and yeah, and then on the other hand, that gives us for companies a better recruiting channel because that value hasn't been accounted for. So it's basically, yeah, that's how we're able to provide like a better quality at a lower cost. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And I guess to that point, pulling Rob's question in from the chat, like how are you incentivizing the uh, partners to, to introduce the, the people within their networks. You want to take that, Daniel? Yeah, sure. So all the interaction on PrimeFlow is kind of governed by our reputation engine. We sometimes call it the, the page rank for reputation. And what it really is at the end of the day is, uh, is a system of accountability, basically, right? So um, it's all about putting through people that the you know the demand owner the client finds valuable and is able to convert into either hires or clients and then you know depending on how well you do you are exposed to more business right and so then you know it doesn't matter if you are putting forward your friends or you are you know putting yourself in touch with potential leads through your job or through events you run or through projects that you run um, at the end of the day it's all about finding that match basically and being recognized for it. All right, so just to add to that quickly, so the recognition and the reputation is really what, you know, like this, the long-term interest for partners is, um, but on the kind of quicker, uh, you know, time frame, they are getting paid with the rewards, right? So like we're especially targeting these partners who can you know, not just make an introduction once, but are really good fit for the company. So it could potentially, you know, like be part-time recruiters or salespeople for them. Um, and in that way, it's really worthwhile for them because it's a, yeah, it's an interesting side income that they get regularly. I got, a, I got a couple, one of which is some, a couple of questions. One of which is like quite a normal thing, which is like, are you just an employee referral scheme? Like, why are you better? Um, which is fine. And we, we can answer that question because um, I know you guys have the answer to that. But what's probably more interesting for people is like, how are you thinking about measuring reputation? So I can take this one. So. You know, the difference between PrimeFlow and um, other services is that we have multiple layers of the data. 
So we have, you know, the information about the, the market itself, the supply and the demand, then the social structure that along which this information flows, basically, and then the transactional layer where people actually get paid for providing value. And if you kind of combine all of those into one source of a track record for the value provided, um, that, that for us is kind of the guidepost that dictates the reputation on top of which we can then base a bunch of features in the tool, right? We can do curation, we can do, you know, introducing to new business because you have proven your value in previous interactions. We can kind of uh, do all that on top of the reputation. How do I gain your reputation model so that I come out top? You help our clients succeed. <laughs> that, that's the most straightforward way. <laughs> you know, like if you just think about, okay, like what are like conventional reputation models, you know, that you can think of. So it's these like five star rating thingies, right? Where everybody, it's like a social expectation that everybody gives each other five stars because otherwise your Uber driver's career is screwed, right? Yeah. Um, and then on the other hand, you have like, LinkedIn, which just shows you, okay, how many people you're connected to. Now, you know, that's real easy to gain, right, for, for instance. But if you, because we're anchoring it on an actual transaction and money being spent, it makes it less uh, um, easy to gain because, like, people have to actually, you know, accept, yes, we hired that person, yes, we made that sale. And so there's not really a way around, you know, like, them confirming that it actually happened. That makes sense. I guess like part of that it contributes to why you're not just an employee referral scheme. Yeah, I mean, let's kind of uh, address that one as well. So, yeah. um, you know, it goes back to me saying that it's hard to make it scale, uh, these types of schemes, because there you are basically working with people who, you know, are already your employees, they have their day job. Um, they, you know, how often does it happen for them that one of their friends just happens to have somebody, right, um, to, to recommend to you? What, we, what you should do instead, we think, is you should have focused set of partners that you onboard on actually working with you and participating on the business and, you know, making it their top three priority to actually do this with you weekly, right, um, to send you people to participate. And that's how you drive the engagement which is basically the downfall of all the referral systems is that they just don't have engagement. So it's probably a slightly un unfair summary, but employee referral schemes don't work because it's not their main thing. And a prime flow partner network, like they're better than uh, an employee referral network because they have these connections and they're there to tie it together and they, they profit from it properly. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. the difference between one-off and uh, site income or potentially a full-time uh, gig that you are running there. So I can see a world under which PrimeFlow replaces a large portion of the traditional recruitment method. Um, but I know you guys have been scoping out the sales um, market in terms of helping people generate business. Like, talk to us a little bit about how you see it incorporating into the sales cycle. Yeah, so, I mean, the commonality between these use cases is basically that the most valuable asset in these industries is this last mile access to people, right? And so this includes, you know, recruiting, but then also business development, investing, real estate, uh, basically any use case where knowing the right people is the only way to make a difference. Um, and, you know, while our reputation engine I mentioned before kind of ties, ties it all together, uh, we do have vertical specific incentive mechanisms. Um, so we have various uh, commission and revenue sharing models in the pipeline to kind of make Primeflow work for the different verticals and tie it back to the central piece of the, of the reputation. Um, basically, if you put yourself in the shoes of a CEO, right? Imagine your life. Your two main problems are recruiting. Pretty, pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> You still have problems, and <laughs> you know your, your main one of the main problems you have is recruiting and sales, right? And uh, if you imagine that your partner network became your dominant recruiting channel, it's kind of a small step to then also use it for sales, and um, it sort of works across those different uh, use cases. And you know this way, your company that's kind of the breakdown, right? The, the edge of 
who is inside and who is your helper outside blurs and the company's reach extends in these different you know, uh, acquisition channels. And so basically with time flow, your company gains a superpower. Okay, yeah, I, I can kind of uh, believe that. There's a couple of things coming in on the Q&A. Um, not sure which order to go with these. And I think it's probably more interesting to start off with like, you're building private networks rather than an open marketplace. Um, talk us through, I guess, like what an open marketplace would look like and why you've decided not to choose that. Yeah, so there's uh, a few different reasons for that. But like maybe the most intuitive place to, st to start is if you look at existing kind of business relationships, you know, like they, they don't happen like people just broadcasting stuff on open networks. It's um, off, you know, like it's really, they share information with selective specific contacts, um, but yeah, tend to not broadcast them. So it's, that's one piece, right? We're kind of mirroring how it already happens in the real world. And if you think about it, like lots of the marketplace solutions you can think of are really kind of, you know, they tend to end up being quite spammy and low value because they don't have any kind of mechanism to disincentivize spam, right? And set the right incentives. Um, so yeah, that's why we don't want to go that route. And it also, uh, you know, maybe the last piece there is what Daniel mentioned before, which is engagement. So if it's just, okay, like here's an opportunity, you post that on LinkedIn and anybody can see it, no one will really feel that implicated. Whereas if you target specific people who can, you know, like have the network to help there, that's much more likely to succeed. So is it fair to say that rather than private, you're a create a curated networks of partners? Yeah, I mean, since this is a bunch of crypto people, it's like a DAG structure, right? Um, I guess. Yeah, so we, we map the existing structure that right now, you know, the existing social structure that lacks the, you know, for lack of a better word, the transaction rails, right? So all these private uh, WhatsApp groups and all these kind of under the counter discussions, yep. which are just inefficient, but very private, right? We want to keep the privacy, but map out a little bit the, you know, who is actually driving value and offer these people a way to monetize in those points. Gotcha. And coming in from Yuri um, as a question is, I'm bright, new and shiny. I come in, I'm a partner. I've got no reputational track record. I, that's a hurdle to me engaging with the network, even if I've been specially selected by Jan because he knows that I'm awesome, I still don't have any reputation in the system. How do you overcome that barrier? So yes, so you know when you start on Primeflow as a partner, the way you start is by being onboarded through specific demand. So you basically start by working with uh, one of our clients and that's for you the proving ground, right? Um, we don't suppress you if you are just starting out. We give you the chance to, you know, get out there, submit your leads. Uh, if stuff converts, we progressively open up the your access to more demand and also your kind of prominence when you when you do the business with others. So we try to sort of map to how this already happens, but we try to make it uh, more efficient. You know, so it doesn't take two years to prove yourself, but somebody who is good can kind of get going much faster. That's actually one of the key challenges in designing a proper reputation system is how do you, you know, properly account for future potential versus past success, right? So that's like just one of the many complexities there. Nice one. Nice one, guys. Well, we're, we're starting to uh, come to the end before someone kicks me out and makes me move to the next chat. Um, so I guess, Jan and Daniel, thanks very much for for joining us. I always enjoy talking to you guys about reputation models. We probably didn't talk about as end customer value as we should do, um, but hopefully everyone else that joined us found the direction that we went in um, interesting. I would encourage everybody who's listening to go to the next session, uh, which is with Team Crucible, who are in the gaming space and doing some really interesting stuff around identity uh, within virtual environments. And yeah. I think on that note, it's probably good to good to end and finish up. Thanks very much for everyone. And you. you've got Primeflow. Yeah, Primeflow.com. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks.